The internet is packed with misinformation. You knew that, right? If you didn't know that, you should keep it in mind whenever you read anything online because there are a lot of misleading claims that you will come across in the realm of skincare, health in general. You have to be very skeptical. In this video, we're gonna be talking about a recent paper that came out in the Journal of Clinical and Experimental Dermatology doing a deep dive into misinformation online with regards to acne. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Andrea. I'm a board certified dermatologist. I upload skincare content here on YouTube. If you like that, consider subscribing, hit the bell. That alerts you when my videos go live. Or you may want to follow me over on TikTok or Instagram. Acne is a really common skin condition. It's one of the reasons why a lot of people find my channel. And it mostly affects teenagers, but you can get it in your 30s, 40s, 50s. It's psychologically distressing to have acne, whether it be on your face, your body. It can be physically painful and untreated. It can go on to leave scars that likewise are psychologically distressing. When you're dealing with acne, it's very easy to go down the rabbit hole of finding information online in an attempt to help yourself out, but really you can stumble into a lot of bad information. As this study highlights, people who cope with acne, they're really distressed about their appearance. Maybe they're even being bullied at school or in the workplace. People just making offhand comments like, oh, you know, <laughs> Like, no, just keep your mouth shut. Acne is common, it's visible, and it has psychosocial impacts. All of these things make people who are dealing with acne incredibly vulnerable to misinformation online. This group sought out to characterize and identify misinformation online. They started with Google searches, and then they did a deep dive into Twitter, Facebook, my favorite, TikTok, which is just a platform of not only misinformation, but bogus misinformation. I mean, the most like, why are people believing this kind of misinformation? Anyways, they also took a look at Instagram as well. And they noticed some themes in terms of different categories of misinformation. Diet is a big one, misinformation about the causes of acne, and misleading claims about potential cures, as well as fear mongering around acne treatment. Kind of a distrust for conventional medicine, and overall medical treatments for acne, which by the way, conventional treatments, while they are demonized and fear-mongered online, <laughs> They have a long-standing track record of safety and efficacy. Of course, they don't work in everyone and some things need to be tweaked, but you know, just because there are established risks and side effects of a medical treatment doesn't make it the devil and doesn't make these other things that people are trying to sell you any safer, let alone more effective. So let's get into some of the things that people online are claiming allegedly cause acne. Poor hygiene. Honestly, in my time on the internet, making YouTube videos, Instagram, and now TikTok. I really don't come across this, but apparently in this study, they found that there were a lot of claims online that acne is just you know something that is related to poor hygiene, inevitably trying to sell you some kind of antiseptic or face wash to remove harmful bacteria. Acne is not an infectious disease. While there is a bacteria that lives on everyone's skin and plays a role in acne, it's called cutibacterium acnes, it's not an infectious disease and you can't catch acne from somebody. It's like related to how your genetics play around with that little bacteria and the skin cells turning over, all those things. Anyways, so a lot of claims about poor hygiene, and I guess I will say I have kind of come across this in comments here on YouTube and seen stuff on like online where people claim that buying an antiseptic like Hibiclens or Betadine, which are surgical scrubs used to disinfect the skin surface, are a treatment for acne. Those are less problematic. Other people claim to use use Neosporin to treat their acne. This is not helpful at all. Neosporin has antibiotics in it that are not particularly great and you do pose a risk of bacterial resistance using that on the skin unnecessarily. Not to mention it is a product that people commonly develop a reaction to and that can lead to more irritation and actually worse in your acne. So I guess that's one scenario that I do come across frequently. People kind of under the misunderstanding that if they use an over-the-counter antiseptic, it will help clear the acne. I can see why people would easily go down that rabbit hole. I mean, as far as treatments that work for acne, a lot of them are antibiotics, whether it be topical antibiotics like clindamycin that you put on the skin or oral antibiotics like doxycycline or minocycline that are taken for 
for a period of time. While those are antibiotics, honestly, the main way that they work to treat acne is actually because they have secondary anti-inflammatory properties, and that is how they work. And we don't treat acne with those indefinitely. Uh, it's really just kind of a short course to control it and get it under control to prevent scarring and then put you on something that can be taken more on a long-term basis to control the acne breakouts. I guess they came across a lot of like antimicrobial face washes claiming to clear acne and kind of misrepresenting acne as an infectious disease. So there's a lot of misinformation about the relationship between certain foods, your diet, and acne. And the most common category of foods that are proselytized against is gonna be dairy. In terms of dairy, the only association is a weak association between skim milk consumption and more stubborn acne. It's a pretty weak association. It's not apparent for everyone. Just because people who consume a lot more skim milk sometimes have more stubborn acne doesn't necessarily mean that milk causes acne, let alone the entire dairy category. We have no evidence that cheese, yogurt, any other dairy product <laughs> causes acne. Uh, the strongest association between acne and diet is actually in the consumption of a diet with high glycemic load foods, basically sugary processed foods that may lead to increases in what's called insulin-like growth factor that can feed back onto the cells that line your oil gland and the cells that line your pore, cause them to proliferate too much, plug up the pore and lead to more acne. So a high glycemic load diet, it has been associated with more stubborn acne and may play a role in the pathogenesis of it. Oddly enough, amongst all the fear mongering that they came across in terms of diet and acne, nobody was really talking about glycemic low diets or promoting low sugar diets, which I find odd. I mean, people are all about talking about cutting out sugar and all that kind of stuff. You know, you gotta be careful when it comes to interpreting diet studies and acne or any skin issue because some dietary modifications can be harmful. And if so, if they're not evidence-based, then no doctor is gonna go recommending that you do this. When it comes to you know, minimizing the sugar in your diet, that's generally safe, but some people, you know, psychologically, they can become a little bit too fixated on that and you know, develop disordered eating. Coming across a study that shows the association between skim milk and more stubborn acne, they just take that and run with it and batch the entire family of dairy foods, you know, batch all of dairy into one thing. A lot of the websites and accounts that they came across claimed that fluoridated water was the cause of acne. It is not. I see a lot of people fear monger around fluoride in toothpaste. And fluoride in toothpaste, the thing is, a lot of times those toothpastes may have more SLS, which is a detergent, that if it gets on the skin, it can be irritating. And for people, that often can trigger something called perioral dermatitis but there's no proof that fluoride in the water supply is causative of any skin problems. And fluoride in toothpaste, it's important for preventing cavities. The amount of fluoride that you are exposed to either in tap water or in or in toothpaste is like so, 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 so low. These wellness websites have perpetuated this idea. And for a lot of people, there is a false fixed belief that this is what is causative, even though there's no data suggesting that whatsoever. All right, and then this is something I see on Instagram a lot, and I used to see it on YouTube a fair amount, or people trying it out on YouTube in front of their audience. And that is this idea that there's some sort of systemic infection, whether it be a parasite or candida that is causing not only acne, but a whole host of health problems. Maybe you've heard of people claiming that they're going on a candida cleanse, candida cleanse, or the candida, candida diet. It's complete bunk. Um, candida is a yeast that's naturally present in your mouth, your GI tract the vagina and you can have overgrowth of that that leads to like yeast infections, thrush, but that's seen in people who have poor immune systems, diabetes, maybe you've been on antibiotics, but it doesn't cause acne and it doesn't cause this whole host of problems that a lot of these websites claim it does. 
All right, so what miracle cures are they hawking? Veganism as a cure for acne. Veganism is not a cure for acne. And they came across this a fair amount that people's acne would just miracle, you know, miraculously clear by going on a vegan diet. And it just bothers me to no end that people would perpetuate false information, in my opinion, in a, as a way to coerce people into, into the vegan lifestyle. I don't think that that is right. And it doesn't help the vegan message to be spreading misinformation. Veganism, first of all, veganism is kind of a loaded term. There's a variety of ways you can eat a vegan diet, some of which are healthier than others. So it's, it's a lifestyle centered around minimizing reliance on animals and you know, focusing on animal well-being. It's not about a given diet. Sure, it excludes all animal derived things, but there are a variety of ways that you can get there, some healthier than others. So to just make a blanket statement that going vegan will cure your acne, it doesn't make sense because there are a variety of ways you can go vegan. Making false promises to cure or treat any illness, because if you go doing that to coerce people into your lifestyle, and then it doesn't work out because, hello, it's not a proven way to do to, to treat those issues then those people are going to be really pissed and they're going to want nothing to do with veganism so they may be vegan for you know six weeks a couple of months and then when their acne doesn't clear up they're going to realize that they've been sold a bucket of bs and they're going to want nothing to do with veganism <laughs> so a lot of vegan personalities and websites will say oh once i went vegan i just had this glowing skin and my skin cleared up this likewise perpetuates the idea that you have acne because of something that you are doing in your, di in your diet. If you only ate a certain way, in reality, there's no evidence for that. It's complete BS. The other you know, kind of miracle cure is dietary supplements and kind of making claims that certain nutrient deficiencies cause acne. And they really, you know, there's no evidence for that either. And ironically enough, a lot of the dietary supplements that are being sold contain high amounts of minerals and things that at those levels actually can trigger and worsen acne. Speaking of supplements, another one that is frequently touted as being beneficial for acne is diindoleal methane, DIM. I have a whole video about DIM supplements because I get a lot of questions about it. This comes from, it's a compound found in cruciferous vegetables, which y'all know I love. My cruciferous vegetables, can't get enough of them, but it's touted as like a hormone balancer, uh, makes claims that uh, it will block the androgen receptor and you know have more of a favorable estrogen profile. And sure, there are some studies in vitro, which means cells in a dish, not in actual humans, showing anti-inflammatory effects, anti-cancer effects, but that doesn't mean that this compound has any outcome in people. In my video on DIM, some of you commented that you tried it and it caused a lot of hormonal issues for you actually, it messed up your menstrual cycle and all of these things. So be cautious. Also in the paper, there was a shout out to the medical medium. I did a video on him and his dermatoxin claim recently. Anyways, he was mentioned uh, as someone online claiming to cure your acne if only you buy his book for $16.99. <laughs> Anyways, he was mentioned and then, you know, the typical acne DIYs like the toothpaste spot treatment don't put toothpaste on your pimples toothpaste again like I said earlier it's got a lot of SLS in it which is fine you know it's what makes it foamy but that can really be super irritating as a spot treatment it's gonna worsen your acne why is the toothpaste thing still going strong toothpaste thing was around in the 80s and 90s probably around in the 30s like we have advanced leave the toothpaste for your mouth stop putting it on your skin <laughs> Uh, and then the other offender that is always popping up on all these DIY sites is lemon juice. Apparently they came across a lot of sites lauding the benefits of applying lemon juice to your skin. Please do not do that. Lemon juice is very acidic, which is not good to the skin. It can be highly irritating. Not to mention if you get sun exposure with lemon juice on your skin, it can cause what's called a phytophotodermatitis, a blistering rash miserable that's not going to be good for your skin let alone your acne do not do it and then garlic was another topical that they found websites claiming you know would 
would cure your acne. I assume they mean applying it to the skin. No, a garlic actually on the skin can be pretty irritating. A lot of food handlers, people who work at, you know, professional chefs, kitchen, you know, people who work in a kitchen as part of their occupation, there'd be cooking food, preparing food, food handling. Uh, they often can develop dermatitis on their fingers from chopping up garlic. It's pretty irritating to be applying directly to the skin. That's why you know gloves are important for people doing that as part of their occupation. But putting it on the skin, not a good idea. It's not going to treat your acne. Now garlic supplements, I see them in the health food stores all the time. They um, are not evidence-based for treating acne. Uh, you know, maybe they have anti-inflammatory effects. But one thing I will say about garlic supplements is they actually can increase your risk for bleeding and bruising. So if you are taking a garlic supplement, uh, make sure you tell your doctor because it could interfere with certain medications. And if you're going to have a procedure or even something like Botox or fillers where they do, you know, an injection, it will increase your risk of bruising. Just because these websites are hawking these natural remedies, it doesn't mean they're necessarily safe, effective, let alone evidence-based. Then there was a lot of negative connotation around, you know, conventional treatments that are evidence-based, first-line therapies, a lot of negative talk about antibiotics that are prescribed, you know, kind of grossly misrepresenting side effects. Antibiotics, they claim, are pollutants. You know, they're not, honestly, they have their role in acne treatment. They're not a cure for acne, but they have a role in clearing it up quickly so as to prevent scarring, and then you're started on something that can be used more long term. But the one they really love to fear monger online to no end is isotretinoin, brand name Accutane. First of all, they really play up the controversial link between Accutane and depression, saying that it's going to cause you to, you know, be depressed and all this stuff. When in reality, numerous meta analyses, dad, they show actually that it may improve and your overall quality of life can improve. Of course, it's prudent to monitor for mood changes while on the medication, but these websites, they really misrepresent that and play into it to fear monger against it. Meanwhile, selling you some, you know, bottle of who knows what. The other uh, controversial link is between Accutane and inflammatory bowel disease like ulcerative colitis or Crohn's. Uh, a long time ago, it was you know thought, hey, there's an association here, but higher quality research has come out, meta analyses and things that actually show no link between inflammatory bowel disease and Accutane. People who have Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis, they often have acne, so it's like you know, chicken or egg thing, and the Accutane is just guilty by association. Having having ulcerative colitis or Crohn's, it's not caused by, by Accutane. All right, y'all, so this study, you know, highlighted a lot of what I see on a regular basis, creating content about skincare and dermatology online. There's just so much BS out there. And with acne, it is psychologically distressing. It affects young people who are consuming a lot of the internet. They're on the internet way too much and so they're very they're a very vulnerable group but anybody can fall prey to this stuff and when you're dealing with something a physical ailment whether it be on your skin or affecting you know you internally it can be you're very vulnerable the way medicine is operating these days uh, you know, physicians are forced to see a high volume of patients in a very limited amount of time. So it's like very difficult to feel as though you're being heard, taken seriously. Uh, and you know, as soon as you feel that way, you're not going to want to go back. You're not going to trust doctors. Um, and I totally get that. You know, I totally understand why people go this route, but I'm telling you, this is not any better. I mean, you're being fed a lot of misinformation. Uh, it's, it's distressing, but don't give up on, on medicine, on conventional medicine. Please try and find someone who will take your symptoms seriously, whether it be your skin or your you know, internal body health, whatever issues you are dealing with. Be very, very, very careful with stuff that you come across online because a lot of it is with the intent to grow a following online or you know sell a product uh, be very skeptical all right y'all i hope this video was informative and if you liked it give it a thumbs up share it with your friends and as always don't forget sunscreen and subscribe i'll talk to you guys tomorrow bye